Hey folks, welcome back to another Data Science 1. Today we're going to talk about web scraping. Uh, so moving into your final projects, uh, we're going to try and fill in the gaps uh, where uh, you guys need a, a little bit more uh, background and knowledge uh, and, and just a little bit more experience to really start digging into problems. So one of the, the early parts of these projects for a lot of you will be collecting the data and and for many of you where that data isn't already readily accessible, web scraping will be a big part of that. So we're going to try and uh, address some of the, the challenges and, and ideas here uh, really quickly to, to help you guys get going on your projects. So sometimes uh, you're going to be handed a, a nice box of data by a collaborator uh, or, uh, or a nice uh, uh, curation uh, website that, that hosts uh, data challenges uh, on the internet um, and, and that's fantastic to, to just get handed that um, and, and to be able to, to start immediately uh, EDA and, and modeling uh, but but many times and I think that uh, the projects in this class are, are a good example where uh, especially where the the project is more uh, self-oriented and, and self-driven uh, in that the the ideas and the data don't necessarily come from an internal collaborator, uh, it, it won't be quite so trivial to to just be handed a uh, data that's all set and ready to go. So uh, so one of the things that you'll have to do is is go out and find uh, uh, sources and and uh, and uh, literally collect the data yourself. Uh, luckily, there are lots of uh, fantastic folks who've. Uh, been willing to post data online, uh, and sometimes this is in in really nice, easy to to work with formats. And other times, it's just through normal web pages. Uh, we're we're going to talk uh, really briefly today about both of those ideas. Uh, just kind of give some high level intuition to those, um, and and uh, during the lecture and and for some of your other readings, uh, we'll get a, a little go into a little bit more detail on. Uh, on how to actually uh, go through examples of, of programs and syntax that, that will do that. But, but to, today, for, for this lecture, we're going to stay pretty high level. So uh, as has been the case so far, uh, when we're thinking about uh, easy to, to work with and uh, standardized formats, uh, we're going to start with, with pandas. Um, that uh, once again uh, they have a, a bunch of really great functionality built in here uh, and uh, and uh, assuming that you have some sort of uh, data table or, or some sort of ta tabular format in your website uh, pandas has a great uh, read html function that will scrape that and turn it into a data table uh, so if if you're lucky enough or uh, or happen to uh, purposely choose a website uh, that formats data in tables, uh, of which there there are lots, and and I'd say uh, uh, many of the the types of data that, that you'll be thinking of for these projects uh, will, will conveniently be hosted in tables. Um, that that the pandas way way to go is uh, is absolutely recommended. So to to be a, a little bit more concrete on this, let's just walk through. Uh, a quick example here. Um, so uh, even if uh, it, it may not be obvious, a lot of data um, that's that's put on websites uh, has tabular formats. So for example, the um, the, the tutorial I linked to here uh, had, uh, goes through uh, financial data from Yahoo Finance uh, that's just talking about uh, some of the, the senior uh, personnel on, on a, a company board. Uh, in this case, uh, I believe it's Tesla. And uh, we, we can see what looks kind of like uh, a table here. Um, and, and we'll get, get a, into how we find that out uh, a little bit later in the lecture. Um, but uh, assuming that, that there is a table, um, we can go ahead and pass the URL into pandas read HTML. And lo and behold, uh, what gets spit out of that is uh, a data table with all of the table in our original website. Um, so this is uh, is fantastic. Uh, works really well out of the box in a lot of situations, um, and I, I highly recommend checking this out. Uh, I'll say that uh, 
the the case of just passing in a URL and automatically being given the data you want uh, often isn't the case um, that uh, that there's usually at least one more level of complexity, which is that a lot of the sites that will have uh, data structured in tables will often have more than one table. Um, so just a, a little caveat here is that uh, anytime uh, there, there's more than one table in the, the body of the HTML uh, website text, um, that uh, what pandas will actually uh, give you is a list of all of the tables uh, that are in your website. So uh, if you, you had a very keen eye, you have noticed that uh, in, in the last example, we actually uh, had a zero index after the read HTML call. Uh, here we've omitted that to show you that, uh, that what the call returns is actually a list of the tables. And you can find table one or table two by indexing with index zero or one um, to, to pull out just that table. Um, or, or in this case, since uh, since these tables are, are meant to go together, they're just split to put it, to be uh, put in a, a two column format. Um, you might want to, for example, concatenate the two data frames in this uh, in this list to to have uh, a, one larger data frame. Um, that has uh, you know all your attributes and then all their values. So so this is is really great. Um, this is a, another example of uh, Python and and pandas uh, really having a bunch of functionality out of the box where where we can just import um, and, and it works uh, beautifully. Uh, I, I love this XKCD comic. Uh, there, there's tons of, of these uh, fun uh, Easter eggs in, in Python. So th those of you new, new to it, I'd uh, suggest you, you look for some more Easter eggs too. Um, but uh, the, the case of it being this easy is, is not always the case because it depends not just on, on pandas and Python, but obviously a, a lot on the particular website and, and type of data that you're looking for. Um, so when it's uh, when it's not quite so easy, we have to go to web scraping um, and actually walk through the the websites themselves uh, to find where the relevant information lives and and to pull it out. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, the process that you'll actually go through for doing this depends on the structure of the website you're looking at and the data that you want to get out of it. Um, but but next we'll go through a, a pretty simple tool. Um, that, that I think is a, a great way to start going about that process. Uh, so the, the first part of that process is to get a, a website. Uh, now, this isn't a, that hard a thing to do. Um, if you are at a website in your browser, you can just right click and download. Um, and it'll save a, an HTM file uh, right on, on your desktop or, or into whatever folder you, you want to put it in. Um, there are great options at the command line like curl or wget um, where you can uh, where you can uh, put in a, a URL of a website you want and it'll download uh, whatever lives at that URL into the the folder that you're calling this from in the terminal. Uh, what we may end up wanting to do is actually automate uh, when it is that we uh, pull, uh, web pages. Um, we'll, we'll get back to that in, in a second here, uh, or, or a, a bit later in the lecture. Um, but uh, but we can we can do this from within Python too. There's a, a really nice package uh, for requests that, that let you get uh, the HTML at uh, a website um, with this package. So when you uh, when you download uh, a bunch of HTML uh, it, and print it out. Uh, if you're you're lucky, it'll it'll look something like this, where it's it's nice and structured. Um, actually, this is a a screenshot of uh, viewing the source in Chrome. If if you were to actually um, actually uh, just print out the the raw HTML in Python terminal, it would look like even more of a mess. Just a, a continuous wall of text. Um, also. Uh, uh, bonus points for uh, whoever can, can guess what this website is. Um, so uh, for, uh, for dealing with the, the structure of this messy HTML, there's a really, really nice Python package called Beautiful Soup. Um, 
so so beautiful soup uh, will let you take in uh, any HTML. Uh, the, the example I'm going to show here is uh, is just from the their uh, documentation getting started tutorial. Um, so in this case, they, they just define uh, the HTML of a website uh, just by hand here. Um, but uh, of course, something similar would happen if you were to download the HTML from a, a real website. Um, they just just to, to keep it short. Um, so uh, with beautiful soup, uh, you can uh, assign uh, your your soup object uh, with the HTML uh, that that you've just requested or downloaded. Um, and one of the the first things that that uh, beautiful soup lets you do is it lets you prettify uh, the the HTML you have. So it's in a, a really nice. Um, structured and, and white space indexed uh, 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 file format here, um, where it's, it's really easy to tell what your HTML tags are and, and what the structure and flow of uh, the website is that, that you're looking at. Uh, given this, uh, you can uh, then use Beautiful Soup to go through each of, uh, each of the tags or parts of your website. Um, and, and pull out the information from them. Uh, so in, in a second, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, um, a little bit more about uh, what you might be looking for for a structure. Um, but uh, you know, assuming you you have a, a line in your uh, HTML or a, a re really a tag more so than a line, um, you can use uh, this get text uh, function. For example, to grab the the text that's that's uh, within that line of HTML, um, or, or slightly more generally, uh, a, a, a soup dot content um, to to pull out uh, just gen generically whatever is in in that uh, HTML that you're referencing. Um, so in this case, the, uh, the the get text is called on the the full HTML, and so it's pulling out the the text, uh, essentially removing the tags from from the whole HTML website. Um, th this is nice for turning something that uh, is is well structured, but maybe not all that uh, human readable, into something uh, that looks a lot more like what the uh, actual website uh, that that you've scraped from looks like. Um, but but oftentimes uh, the structure and the tags really are important for uh, for being able to traverse through the website and grab the information that, that you want. Um, so uh, so for example, um, let's say that, that you want uh, to grab all of the links in a web page. Um, there's a, a really nice find all uh, function in Soup uh, that will let you. Uh, find all of the instances of a particular type of tag. Um, so uh, in, in HTML, uh, A is the uh, hyperlink tag. Um, and, and you can go in and uh, through this, this nice function at the top, just pull out all of the, the links in your, web, in your website. Um, there are lots of other types of tags. So for example, you could pull out all of the main headers by searching for, let's say, the H1 tags, um, or all of the main text of, in the body, um, by searching for maybe all of the P tags um, for the, the regular text in, in paragraphs. Um, and, and this is a nice way to, to grab uh, certain classes uh, or certain content. Um, if you look in the, the beautiful soup documentation, uh, you can also uh, search uh, this through uh, um, through the uh, uh, CSS um, attributes as well. Um, so uh, so the the find at the find um, function here will will also let you pass in uh, specific attributes of the um, of the the tags. Um, and, and that's a great way to specify either a, a particular instance that you want, um, depending on, on how well the HTML is labeled, uh, or more frequently, a, a specific type of tag. Um, so, uh, so, for example, 
um, uh, you, you might have, uh, you know, certain rows or certain headers or certain types of links like forward and back buttons, uh, you know, all, all being labeled by, uh, by different types of IDs uh, because they're, they're going to try and pass in a different uh, CSS formatting for that. Um, and so, so looking at what your website looks like um, and, and finding out what tags you want to pull out uh, is a, a great way to, to quickly select um, what, uh, what content you want. And then in just a second, we'll get into uh, what that means a little bit more practically. Uh, before I, I get into that, I just want to say that uh, besides the, the find functions that they go through the whole HTML you've passed in, um, you can also walk through, um, walk through specific examples one by one. So for example, uh, the soup.a uh, will grab the, the first link in your soup, uh, soup in your soup variable. Um, the uh, the dot p will will grab your your first uh, first uh, e tag for for text, um, and uh, and and just by having you know one node or, or one instance within uh, this this whole tree structure of your HTML, um, you can you can actually kind of do walks and and crawl through a, a particular website, um, so you can uh, you can go to the uh the the subdivisions or the the sub tags uh w within um a, a particular tag that you're looking at um by looking at the the contents or the the children um similarly if you use the uh the the parents call uh, you'll you'll go back up the tree um and maybe uh most useful uh for for scraping uh long lists is the uh, the the next um, and, and also previous siblings call uh, that lets you look for the, the next instance of a paragraph or a header or a, a table row. Um, and so you can quickly uh, loop through uh, a, a big list of um, a big list of, uh, of data, even if it's not structured as a list, but just structured um, through, through other types of tags um, really quickly with the, the next and previous calls. Um, so, so like always, uh, we're not going to go into a ton of syntax um, in these lectures um, because I think that's easiest to do, um, you know, by by hand, uh, going through the documentation and tutorials, and especially playing it, playing around with it in your Jupyter notebooks. Um, but uh, I, I suggest uh, checking out all of these, um, and, and especially starting with the the find all. Uh, that uh, I think for for a lot of your projects, that's going to be sufficient. Um, but uh, if if you do find yourself having to, to loop through things, um, the, the next and previous sibling is, is really helpful. So to to zoom out a bit and, and just say, uh, I, I realize that uh, I've I've talked a lot about uh, HTML formatting so far, and uh, and absolutely don't want to assume that uh, that all the folks here have written or commonly read HTML. Um, but uh, but what, one of the, the things that, that we'll be doing in a second is looking at raw HTML. Um, and, uh, and luckily, the, the formatting of it is, is really standardized and simple. Uh, you have uh, a tags uh, before and after some content that you have. Um, and, and the content is the, typically the thing that you actually see and the thing that you care about scraping. Um, because usually the, the important information is, uh, is what um, you're, you're shown when you go to a website, though that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes uh, you might want to scrape something out of some of the attributes, um, or you might want to use those attributes, like we've said before, to filter out which content you think is important. Um, so there's all sorts of attributes. This is the, uh, the, uh, a uh, link tag. So uh, href is the, uh, the uh, URL or the reference for your hyperlink, uh, where that link is going to send you. Um, we just saw an ID tag um, in the uh, in the the previous um, uh, slide, but there are all sorts of other tags that uh, that you might come about. Um, and the, the the meaning of them isn't all that uh, important for for our purposes here. Uh, just knowing to to look for certain tags um, is is really helpful. 
um, and, and again, to figure out what we're looking for or to, to figure out what the, the structure is, there are uh, lots of good ways to interrogate uh, your uh, HTML uh, and find out what the, the source underneath it is. Uh, my favorite, uh, since I use Chrome, is the, uh, the inspect source uh, option if you right click uh, anywhere on a web page. Uh, so what, what I really like about this is that it, uh, it does a, a split screen with your original web page as well as the, the HTML source. Uh, but especially as you uh, hover over the source, it'll tell you um, exactly what it is uh, showing or, or, uh, or rendering uh, or alluding to on the, the page that, um, that, that you're looking at. Uh, so looking at, uh, you know, the, the different uh, sizes and, and different colors of uh, what's being lit up, you can often see like what uh, containers hold other content, uh, which is a good indication of when to use the, the child or parent uh, tree traversal uh, uh, calls, um, or, or especially it can tell you uh, what the particular line is that you're looking for um, for a, a specific link or, or piece of content. Um, again, that, uh, that right-clicking on uh, that part of the, the page will automatically highlight that in the HTML, but as you uh, hover your mouse over it, uh, it'll change the, the highlighting on the page in, in a way that's really nice and easy to follow. So for example, here I've uh, just pulled up uh, a web page from UVM that happens to have a, a list of a bunch of things that maybe you you would want to scrape, um, and uh, and you can see that uh, that the the particular thing that we've uh, highlighted uh, the the art history BA um, is itself a a hyperlink here um, that has a a reference but also a, a class type which is a, a tab. Um, so you could uh, you could go through and search for all of the the tags that had the class tab um, to, to try and grab everything that might be similar to this, um, or you could see that uh, it was in a uh, a, a div container um, that has the the class degree, um, which uh, uh, again may, makes sense for uh, for being this uh, this particular. Uh, uh, this particular instance or object that, that we're interested in pulling out from the website. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, to, to speak practically, um, that uh, I, I don't think that there's a, a ton of deep understanding needed about HTML if you just look at the source of the page that, that you're looking at. Um, and, and HTML has uh, a such loose uh, programming structure in general that that even uh, having deep understanding about uh, you know best practices and, and structure of websites uh, it may not help you that much because uh, everyone is just going to be so different. Um, but uh, yeah, being able to to interrogate them and uh, again this is uh, just just my example from Chrome of the inspect source, but uh, every browser has different ways of viewing the HTML. Um, and the source underneath. So uh, check out uh, those functions for, for whatever you happen to use. Um, the, uh, the example I mentioned before about, uh, about uh, links being uh, particular classes too, here's a, an inspection of the, the, first, um, the first page in our textbook. Um, and uh, what we have here is a, a particular type of link. Um, that uh, that is the uh, next page link. So uh, so you you, you might uh, imagine examples where you want to traverse through a website um, by clicking you know forward and back links and and scraping some information from each page. Uh, you know a lot of the the big lists that that you might want to be pulling data from uh, might be split over. You know, five or ten pages, and, and maybe you have to walk through each one. Um, a, a nice thing to to be able to think about doing is identifying um, where those buttons live and asking what the URLs are for the next page, um, so that you can make a, a for loop that uh, that updates um, 
what your soup function is by uh, refreshing it with uh, with the, the content of the next page uh, and so on and so on until you've uh, gone through your, your whole list. Uh, so to, to close the circle here uh, a little bit uh, with our first example um, and to say uh, why we knew that we were able to, to use the pandas read table, um, if we uh, were to, to take this website uh, and and try and pull out this data, we could tell that we would be able to by inspecting the source. Um, so if we we right click on this in in Chrome and say inspect source, you'll you'll notice that uh, on the right side here, um, what uh, what it highlights is uh, is a, a table class, um, and and within this table class, um, you can see that there are a bunch of of table rows, each with uh, table columns. Um, and and so this is a, a really nice well-contained data structure and this is what tables look like in html uh, so you could you i'm sure you can certainly imagine how you would go about crawling over a structure like this with uh, with parent and child next and previous sibling calls and beautiful soup um, but because that's a uh, uh, such a, a regular format of a table with rows and columns uh, Panda has already made uh, some functionality that will go through that HTML and just pull out that table for you. Um, so uh, what, when inspecting your source, uh, looking for these tables, um, and especially the, the TR and TD tags, um, is a, a great thing to do to get you started in, uh, in figuring out if you can take the, the, the simple way out of this, which if you can is, is highly recommended. Uh, so, uh, so just to, to wrap this up uh, a, a tiny bit, um, I'll say that, uh, that web scraping um, is a, a really powerful tool um, and it can be a, a great way to pull a lot of really, really interesting data. Uh, but there's, there's also two sides of it in that, uh, you know, crawling over websites um, also uh, may not have the, the best reputation uh, at, at times. Um, and, and certainly you should think about the impact of crawling um, or scraping on the, the website that, that you're doing it on. Now, in, in most cases, uh, you'll be doing this on websites that uh, expect to have a lot of traffic and also on websites uh, that already uh, account for and, and have rules for uh, the, the, the robots and crawlers and scrapers uh, that, uh, that they expect to be on their site. Um, and, and sometimes we'll, we'll already have workarounds for that. So uh, when possible, you should try and, uh, and, and realize that that's the case and follow the rules that they have in, in, in place already. Um, so for, for the automated crawlers, there's a, a robots.txt file that's on virtually every website um, that'll tell automated crawlers where to look and, and where not to, um, and it's generally best, best, best practice to follow that, even if you're scraping in a, a much more ad hoc and, and manual way. Um, a, lo a lot of websites that have uh, a lot of data they expect you to want to download or access will have dedicated APIs or RSS feeds. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, considerate to use those when they're available. Um, and also typically a lot easier for you because uh, they'll, want you to use those and, and have nicely structured uh, inputs and outputs um, for, for those types of things um, and, uh, and APIs. Um, and then uh, especially when you're dealing with, with smaller websites or, or uh, uh, less frequently crawled um, data sources, um, uh, kind of especially when, when you're thinking about things that are hosted on, uh, on a single person's machine, for example, um, that, uh, that thinking about uh, how frequently you crawl uh, is, uh, is a, a, a nice thing to think about um, because uh, if you're continuously scraping uh, data from uh, a website, uh, that uh, add, adds a lot of, of bandwidth and overhead to, to that server. Um, and if it, it's not, uh, not designed to handle that, that, that can be a, a big load or, um, or he did to, to bandwidth and end up costing uh, actually a lot of money for the, the person who's, who's hosting that site. 
Um, similarly, the, the number of times you crawl, you should try and keep that to a minimum if you can. Uh, good practice there is is uh, downloading or, or caching a website once if you're if you're going to be crawling it multiple times, um, or if you are do have to crawl it a lot uh, or crawl many web pages uh, uh, sequentially. Think about you know spacing out those calls uh, so that, that you have you know some downtime in between that you look at one website then then wait uh, you know five or ten seconds. Uh, or, or even one second, and uh, and and grab the next uh, refresh or next website, um, just to allow some traffic back and forth in between. Or if you know that, that you're going to have to do a, a pretty extensive amount of crawling, um, setting up that to, to run at at night, uh, but when you expect them to have a lot less traffic is is also nice. Um, but uh, again, no no hard and fast rules here. Just uh, just uh, good to always uh, be considerate, uh, and in the case where you're you're not considerate, or uh, or when uh, especially these larger websites with with more infrastructure um, feel like you're not following the the best practices for them, uh, they will often have uh, protocols in the way to try and stop you from doing this. Um, so the the most Familiar uh, to, to most of you, I'm sure, is the, the CAPTCHA style uh, Are You a Robot test, um, of which there are you know, now lots of workarounds, but uh, uh, it's still best practice uh, you know, not to, to try and, and get a, a robot into a website where, where they're not uh, you know, purposefully not supposed to be. Um, similarly, there'll be lots of uh, Lots of indications about the crawling uh, structure and, and status um, of your your scrapers, where uh, websites will will look for patterns in the way that you access data. Um, this might be uh, again in, in timing. If if you make uh, you know a certain uh, number of calls within uh, a given amount of time, it might be pretty obvious that that no human could do that, and and you're a bot. Um, or similar, there. Similarly, there's a, a lot of, of honeypot traps that are are kind of putting out bait that that only robots would would click on. Um, for example, links that don't show up in the uh, in the rendered website and don't lead anywhere um, are are things that no human would ever click on. But a bot that's going through and trying to follow all of the URLs to crawl through a website uh, would often grab those. Um, and so, uh, so, so, yeah. There, there's lots of defenses that the websites have, um, and, and they, you know, can and will uh, block you from accessing them if they if they think that you're you're not behaving well. Um, but uh, it's, aside from that, uh, that more security focused side of things, uh, practically, uh, th there'll be some challenges too, uh, mostly about the the structure. So. Um, like I said, dealing with the structure of these is really hard because each website uh, is is kind of ad hoc. Um, but even within a, a single website, you might have slightly different structure or patterns uh, of, of web design within uh, a single website at, at different pages or even within a single site uh, if you were to, to query it at different points in time. Um, there, there's again no uh, no hard and fast rules about uh, how websites are structured um, or how consistent they are even within the, the same domain. Similarly, uh, dynamic content um, like like JavaScript is is uh, you know even worse than that where things are are rendered on the fly um, and you you may not be able to access that at all um, or uh, or um, or uh, what you end up being rendered may depend uh, quite a bit on, uh, you know, when and how you're you're visiting that page. Uh, so just uh, all things to to consider. Um, again, for most of you, the type of scraping that you'll do will be pretty simple, and, and I don't expect you to have to deal with any of these challenges. Um, just kind of things to to mention while we're giving a high level overview of of basic web scraping. Um, because, uh, it, you know, I, I, I hope that, that some of you find this really interesting um, and, and, uh, and, and think it's fun to, to try and build some, you know, larger scale uh, uh, web crawlers and scrapers. 
um, where, where you can actually find really, really interesting data that's kind of all, all around the web. Um, just to, to wrap things up, um, trying to, to keep this one a, a bit of a shorter lecture and, and we can cover some more of this material in class um, with, with some more hands-on examples um, that uh, if you can, uh, which is to say if you have uh, tables in the website that you're trying to scrape, uh, please use the, the read HTML function in pandas. It's great. Um, if you need more flexibility, there's lots of tools out there, but Beautiful Soup is, uh, is one that comes highly recommended. Um, you can search for tags, um, which will uh, allow you to quickly figure out what's on the website um, that, that fits the, the format or the uh, class attributes that you're interested in, uh, and is usually the most straightforward way to grab the information you want. Uh, but if you, you do want to kind of traverse through the, the whole HTML, there are ways to do that too to let you, you know, actually walk through a, a web page with, with forward and back and, and up and down calls. Um, and, uh, and while you can download uh, web pages and, uh, and, and deal with them just as single static, uh, static uh, text sources, um, you can also do this a little bit more dynamically by crawling through uh, multiple pages in a website by uh, by following that through as well. Um, so uh, I, I know a, a lot of this was was pretty high level and, and somewhat hand wavy, but I, I hope that you've seen a, a couple examples of uh, of specific things that that could be helpful, especially for the projects at, at the scale that uh, I think most of you are thinking about. Um, and and once again, uh, the documentation and, and tutorials are absolutely uh, the place to go to find out the, the specifics about your particular problem. Um, hope you uh, enjoyed this one and we'll uh, see you next time online.